The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got NVIDIA earnings after the bell today. Markets picking things up in positive territory. Boy, we got some tough retail earnings, man. You check out Foot Locker down about 30% right now. Peloton shares down about 30% as well. Abercrombie and Fitch slightly in the positive. Uh, but yeah, you talk about extending some of the action that we saw yesterday, right? Dick Sporting Goods, et cetera. And uh, why not? Let's let's kick it off at some of the retailers. We'll give our market wrap in a moment. But boy, there's your Foot Locker, man. Um, now this is, let's put it back to a short-term time frame. That's a 10-minute chart. We closed yesterday at about $23. We're down to 15 Now what was interesting there is when we put this back on a four-hour chart, that brings you back to the last earnings event. Pretty similar action, man. Last earnings, back in May, we dived from 42 you settle at 25. All we did was chop around to 25 for three months and boom, just like that, we're gonna open down $8, man. That's more than a 30% acceleration on Foot Locker. We will get into some of the numbers in a moment. You jump over to Peloton shares from seven bucks to five, that's a 30% hit too. And we are gonna open at $5, well below the lows that we had back there in May. And where do we gotta go, man? Wow, look at this, that's yeah, you're below everything on Peloton. Are you below everything? You are below everything on Peloton now. You're going to gap dramatically lower. You could think you were coming into these earnings with your back against the wall, man, and you were. But Peloton going to open down 30%, posting a wider than expected loss, uh, falling sales due to a bike recall out there. All right. And so we got some match. Let's see how Dix is trading yesterday after their demise. Uh, boy, quite a haircut yesterday, and we're going to lose about $2 today with more retail suffering as Dix was just trading at 150 and we're trading at 110 just like that. Macy's trades lower. Whew, what? It's a it's a remarkable one. Now I mentioned that Abercrombie and Fitch, uh, to the flip side, they're trading up almost twenty percent. So we'll get into those numbers, but we got some retail action this morning, and let's check in on Nvidia. Nvidia shares they trade lower yesterday. You know you probably had some profit taken, man. If you if you if you got into this action on Friday or even got into the action on Monday, you opened on Tuesday with about a thirty dollar profit. If you got in at four fifty, if you got in at four thirty, right? Lots of profits built into this some profit taking the day ahead of earnings. Today we come into things and we're up by about $2 on NVIDIA shares. Now markets, S&Ps, going back a little bit big picture. We put this thing on an hourly. This brings us back to the recent highs of 46.34. I'm gonna jump around to a daily real quick to give you some context. Market runs higher from March at a price tag of about 3,800 and change. We run up to 46.34. Now I'm gonna zoom in on that 46.34. And we got a little downtrend channel, man. Where these upper boundary lines and lower boundary lines exactly mash up, line up, maybe that's anyone's guess. You could probably make the case that this one maybe, as we make some new highs, the linear regression could push this possibly a little bit higher. On the bottom side, I think that's somewhat akin to where you'd put that linear regression best fit line on the bottom. Uh, but as you can see, critical area as we're at the upper bound. And every time we've kind of got to the upper, the lower, the upper, the lower, uh, we've seen reversals there. We're coming into Jackson Hole in about 40, uh, 48 hours from right now, but we got to get over NVIDIA earnings. But nonetheless, I thought I'd mention it as we're at a pretty critical area here. You look at where we are on this chart within a few points in the S&P. We're going to break above. We're going to break below. We get the opening bell coming up in 20 minutes. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action. I had these on there. If we extend it to the right, got a little bit above there. Maybe you're looking for a bounce if you're on the bullish side as that channel line brings you down to about 14868 if you're going to test that channel in the NASDAQ, but all the markets in the positive this morning. You get the Dow up by 46 right now. Let's put it back to a 10-minute chart. We're up by 46, but boy, we're pretty close to the lows, right? You back it up to the lows of Friday. You back it up to the lows of Monday. You back it up to the lows of Tuesday, and that's where we just were, coming into the opening bell in the Dow at 34,400, we'll call it. And you get the Russell up by three this morning. Crude, Continuing to trade lower, 78.11 in that crude contract. We're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat, Tiger Forex Report. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We'll talk some Forex. We'll talk some commodities. We always talk a little bit of crude as well. Quite the pullback on crude. 
And we are right at the 382 of the run we've had higher, from 67 bucks up to 85. We're trading at 78. We'll get some action and see what Teddy thinks of that crew contract coming up at 40 past the hour. Gold contract catching a little bit of a bid this morning. We put it back to a 10 minute. Gold up about $9, $8 on the session. We dive lower yesterday, and we haven't gotten to the main event, and that is yields. You talk about some movements, man. So we got a slight reprieve going on this morning as we get the 10-year at 4.27, 4.265 to be exact. You trade down to the lows of price, 128. What did we get to? 128.28 was the low take yesterday. You trade high overnight. We're getting some volatility today yet again, but we got the 10-year pushing 4.27%. And we are 48 hours from Chairman Powell's speech at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, coming up Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I think it might be 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time. Sure to get lots of coverage. The market will be anticipating that, uh, to say the least, right? So we got yields. We got higher price, lower yields slightly today. You jump over to the dollar index, and we still got strength, though. We're pushing 104, right? So pretty remarkable. And you check out the dollar. We back this up even a little bit further. And yeah, pretty remarkable. As I've talked about this week, you got that entire move back from where it was on July 5th, the dollar at about 103.5. You trade down to 99.57, and you are now back above where we were coming into that in the end of June, beginning of July. As the dollar continues to rise, we got higher yields in the US. Uh, and we'll talk to Teddy about all this stuff. Dollar strength, man, pushing 104 this morning. We'll see how the market handles that as you get the S&Ps up by 10. All right, let's jump around. Let's kick it off with NVIDIA. NVIDIA earnings are high stakes event for AI crazed markets. Uh, we'll talk to our man, Kevin Hicks from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, coming up at the next break. And yeah, Kevin was talking about yesterday, right? NVIDIA is not the only stock that may move today, man. You talk about the AI um, crazed markets. What are you talking about? Microsoft, Google, Apple, uh, many others out there as well, of course. Commentary on AI will set the tone for the broader stock market. Analysts say chip makers still cheap after tripling this year. Boy, they got a couple upgrades earlier this week, right? That was part of the reason you saw NVIDIA really starting to run in terms of putting this back shorter term. Um, was it Friday or Monday? I think it was Monday. Maybe Friday. They got some revisions to the price tag. Somebody put them at 680. Someone put them at 780. You're only trading at 460. And what was remarkable here is that you saw the first really talk of this when we were back on August 14th saying, hey, this is not a bad buy at 400. You were just at 480 and boom, just like that yesterday, we opened at all time highs. So we got some volatility, man. You jump over to the analyze tab on the thinkorswim platform and you got about a 10% move. You want some premium folks? $45 of expected move in either direction on NVIDIA shares this morning for a $450 equity. And yeah, you take a look at where we are right there. You want action through Friday, you're talking about about $50 of volatility. Let's open it up, the August 25th options, okay? You wanna buy a call, you think this thing's going higher? You wanna buy a call? You're paying about $25 for a call that's pretty much at the money, which means you gotta get a 5% move just to get your money back. There is some volatility, and rightfully so, built into this equity as we get their numbers after the bell. Uh, gonna be interesting to see where we go today. We got some mortgage numbers we'll talk about when we get back as well. Uh, not surprising, but with higher rates, we've got some low applications for mortgages in there. Stay tuned, folks. We get the S&Ps up by 10. We get the NASDAQ up by 58. We get the Dow up by 49. And don't forget, we'll talk about it. We got our man Basil Chapman. Great day for a live webinar for his subscribers. 90-minute webinar from 4 till 5.30 tonight. We'll talk about that, too. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures up by 10 right now. All the markets in the green. We got NVIDIA earnings after the bell today. We got some retail earnings taken in on the chin. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Kevin Hanks from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, folks, every day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the outstanding team at the Schwab Network. They break it all down. Uh, and we got quite a day. Kevin Hanks, it's NVIDIA earnings day. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we've been talking about this day for a couple of weeks now, and here it is. And you know why it's important? Just look back to May 24th when they last reported earnings and look at the movement in the overall market. Look at the movement in individual stocks. I mean, Tommy, think about this. If you want to connect the dots to AI, which NVIDIA is the leader, the clear leader in AI, and other names that it will affect. I'm, I'm, I'm making a list in the left column of my notes here. It's taking up the whole column, right? It could be Tesla, Uber, Apple, Google Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, Qualcomm, IBM, Intel, Baidu. You get it. It keeps going. And that's not even talking about the smaller companies where there could be dozens of them. So this market will move off. NVIDIA's ability to find out, can their growth catch up to their valuation? Because right now I've got their P.E. around high 230s, 237, 238. Their five-year average, Tommy, 73. So there's the problem with all the good news about NVIDIA is what, when is, can, are they good enough for the growth to catch up to the valuation, Tommy? Yeah, I can't wait to see what they come up with, man. It was a great point. I was pulling up some of the indices as you were talking about that. The S&P, of course, has had quite a run, but you put the NASDAQ 100. May 24th on the Thinkorswim platform, almost 13,500, and we got up to 16,000. So you're talking about 2,500 NASDAQ 100 points. I had an article up here, Kevin, um, talking about the impact that, of course, all the Magnificent Seven stocks have had. But you got the NASDAQ 100 index up 36% year to date. 
The top five stocks pushing 23% of that 36. NVIDIA, the biggest one out there, at almost 7% itself, putting your you know a contribution. So, boy, they're big numbers, man. We get to find out today after the bell. Uh, I'm going to jump to retail earnings, Kevin. We have some winners and some losers, but it seems like, boy, we got some lofty losers out there. Some big numbers. Foot Locker, Peloton. Yesterday it was Dick's. What do you think of the general sentiment right now? You know, when you look at the economy, of course, but retail taking it on the chin, especially some of those equities. I know Abercrombie's higher today, but boy, 30 percent, 20 percent, some big numbers for retail. Yeah. What, what's amazed me, Tommy, is the moves, is the percentage moves. Look at Foot Locker today. It's going to be down seven and a half, eight dollars yeah. here to start the day. That is a massive number. And Dick's, you, you know, yesterday, that is an incredible move in some of these names. But there but I think Tommy, there's opportunities in trading some of these names. Now, I wouldn't necessarily buy a footlocker, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't buy Dick's or Nike on some of this weakness because these businesses are not gonna stay down. Dick's is way too popular. I was in a Dick's right before school started. The lines were like Christmas. Now, do they have issues that they've got to resolve? Yes, they do. But they're still an incredibly popular product. Do I, does that mean the stock's going straight up? I don't know. I have no idea, Tommy. But, wow, that is a big correction in Dick's Sporting Goods. And Nike, in many ways, doing the same thing. Because if you look at a Dick's Sporting Goods, it's pretty much full of Nike products. And Nike... You know, if you look at a three-year chart of Nike, it's got a high of 179. It's now going to trade below $100 here to start the day. So incredible moves in, in the apparel industry. And right, winners and losers, right? Abercrombie and Fitch. I mean, needless to say, that's not. I'm not their target market, but <laughs> boy, uh, a nice comeback from them. What they're proving is, they can stay trendy as long as the supply chain stay open, right? They they can yeah. continue to do a good job. So, yeah, a lot of winners and losers in retail, Tommy. You're making a lot of sense to me, man, because uh, I love Dick's. They got a great Dick's Sporting Goods at the Brandon Mall by us, a big mall. That's a, the mall's even got a carousel in it, Kevin. So we go, we bring the kids. They got a Cheesecake Factory, maybe. They got a Bahama Breeze, right? They got a Dick's Sporting Goods. And you know what I love shopping for most in there? It's a, some Nike stuff. As you say it, man, they got some great yep. Nike stuff. Not exactly cheap, um, but I've been in there the last, I think, two, three times in the last three, four weeks. And yeah, not exactly cheap, folks. They got to pay for all that real estate they got. Um, but isn't that interesting, Kevin? They got a great selection of Nike, Under Armour, all that stuff. But I do love the Nike stuff they got in there. Um, and Foot Locker, yeah, I haven't been in there in a while. So you put a difference. And That's then Abercrombie and Fitch. Right? Different story, man. I haven't walked into an Abercrombie in a while. I used to love that place in college. I know they're a different, different genre, um, but doing well this morning. Well, with that in mind, Kevin, we're coming into. We got two days till Jackson Hole, but we got some earnings as we talked about. I know uh, we got one main event going on today, but what are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, man? Of course, the whole show will be focused on NVIDIA. Nice. Uh, like Paul is going to do a presentation on Discord Tree and some of the discount retailers and then we'll look at snowflake another name coming out with earnings after the bell today that's been kind of forgotten about so we'll look at the cybersecurity names so yes nvidia dollar and snowflake today pretty awesome and as we wrap it up kevin i jump over to the analyze tab for nvidia they got about a move of about 45 dollars for that market maker expected move up there for the listeners that haven't seen you talk about it or explain it to us because that's quite a move for nvidia man 45 dollars probably rightfully so with the moves we're getting. But could you tell the listeners, Kevin, real quick, what that number means and what that's implying and how it's generated on the Thinkorswim platform? Pretty cool on a day like today where we got $45 from NVIDIA. Yeah, when you open up the Thinkorswim platform and you look at that right column, the slide bell this week, right, which covers the date, implied volatility. That number goes higher the expert goes up automatic generated moving it so I think so that happens and so what that does is expected move based on the implied volatility of the firm it's not the answer but based on the implied volatility, 
thing it's, it's implying a one day move right just under $45. So, answer the question, it's actually part of the question. The answer will be when the actual stock makes a move. Uh, and I can't wait. We get to find out tonight, man. $45. If you're buying volatility, man, boy, you better be looking for quite a move paying uh, that type of premium. But as we see, we've seen some moves this week. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man, on a busy morning. We'll be watching Fast Market today, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking about three great stocks. They're kicking it off with NVIDIA, man. Um, and, yeah, as Kevin mentioned, they'll be talking about more equities than just NVIDIA because this thing can really – as we saw, it was a great way that he described things going back to May 24th, right? We've seen the run NVIDIA has had. Tough to miss that on the chart when you break out of their earnings, but pretty remarkable when you look what it can do to the entire index, right? You go back to May 24th, there it is on the NASDAQ 100, folks. We had a low of 13,566. We traded up just shy of 2,500 points. That's almost a 20% acceleration for the entire NASDAQ 100 index. And as I mentioned to Kevin, uh, NVIDIA putting 6.7%, Microsoft almost 5 Apple almost 5 and they're all going to have action today. Amazon as well. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. We'll be right back. Attention traders and investors. Are you ready to elevate your game in the stock market? On August 23rd, join Basil Chapman, the mastermind behind the renowned Chapman Wave methodology in a subscriber-exclusive 90-minute webinar. From 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern, dive deep into the secrets of the 914 moving average, decode market turns, and get a head start on the stock outlook for September and October. The golden opportunity is free for all opening call subscribers. And if you're not on board yet as a subscriber, here's the deal. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Zero risks, all rewards. So what are you waiting for? Visit the front page of TFNN.com now and secure your spot. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. you got the S&P catching a lift by about 12 points to 44.11 right now. As I mentioned, pushing the upper boundary of a potential channel line out there. As we're trading at 44.11.25, all the markets in the positive. Dow just above 15,000 right now. Excuse me, NASDAQ 100 above 15,000. You have the Dow up 75 points, trading at 34,417. Let's check in on NVIDIA shares. Up a bit, basically flat. you got $45. Let's see how they open when the options open here. You jump over to a $50 move now. See, this is so interesting. So what are we What are we just looking at, right? We we're just looking at yesterday. It was about $45 priced in. We got about $50. You're paying $53 a premium if you want action through Friday. Now, what's so cool here is that you're paying $50 for the earnings is how this is calculated. Excuse me. But you also get action through Jackson Hole. And, and you might see some real action on Jackson Hole in the growth stocks, depending on what Chairman Powell does. Not sure he's going to come out and shock the market or anything, but boy, you could see some volatility around that speech Friday morning. So keep in mind, when you look at the exposure through the Friday options, you're gaining exposure through Jackson Hole at the same time, and we may see some volatility there. But nonetheless, we're talking about a $50 move, and markets catch a lift. You get a little bit of a pop there. We're back to 461. Sell off yesterday from 483.44. We got an all time high print the day before their earnings. And yeah, we'll see if they can do it again today. All right, let's check in on some of the companies with their numbers. And yeah, we talked about Foot Locker. It was interesting. Kevin couldn't agree with him more, man. That's And maybe we're in a similar facet of, of um, stage of life, right? As in not the Abercrombie and Fitch stage, nonetheless. But it is interesting, anecdotally, okay, myself, I do enjoy the Nike section at Foot Locker tremendously. And they have a bunch of great sections, okay? As I mentioned, there's a great store, just not on the cheap side. Sometimes you can find that stuff a little bit cheaper at other places. But nonetheless, Nike, living and dying with retail, they're down 4% right now. You jump over to Peloton, okay, Peloton. They catch actually a lift on the open. They're still down 23%. Let's take a look at these numbers real quick. Peloton shares. So they lost 68 cents versus 38. So that's always a big problem when you lose almost double what you're supposed to. They reported a net loss of $241 million or 68 cents a share for the three month period compared with a loss of a buck 20, no, 1.26. Yeah, that's when they were really taking it on the chin. Sales dropped to 642 million versus 678. Now, which the, what they talk about in here is that they're a seasonal business. Nobody likes to buy expensive. Um, fitness equipment during the summer because people are too busy. You got your kids at home. Maybe you send the kids back to school. That's a time that you have some time at home. You buy a home fitness, a piece of equipment. Maybe you're trapped in the winter, right? Up in the Northeast, you buy a piece of fitness equipment so you can exercise in time, etc. Uh, and they even say here that they are a fitness company. trying to get the exact quote but uh, excuse me they're a seasonal company of course they're a fitness company so this was always going to be the toughest quarter the slowdown exceeded our expectations through may and through the first three weeks of june as consumer spending shifted toward travel and experiences then eight weeks ago the trend reversed itself and we began to see a reacceleration in hardware sales they're trying to give some silver light there now they have 3.08 million subscribers here's here's like the silver lining they got debt man they're trying to remanage um revamp this company right now they're catching a bid here they are valued at a company that is valued you jump over to the fundamentals this is peloton we're talking about here at about two billion dollars just shy 1.9 billion dollars just shows how hard it is to build a billion dollar company man i mean they get mocked all the time they have three million people paying on a subscription basis to use their subscription service outside of the bikes okay now their subscriptions declined by 29,000. That's basically flat when you're talking about 3.08 million. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get into different areas in terms of a rental service, selling refurbished bikes. They're having some problems though, okay? Look at the numbers they're talking about here. They've been working to capture customers who don't have the thousands of dollars to splurge on the stationary bike or treadmill by offering a rental program and a certified refurbished option. The rental service, which launched in Germany, has 48,000 subscribers, and the refurbished line, 6,500 sales. That is nothing, 6,500 sales. I don't know if that's just in Germany or where it is, um, but nonetheless, they take quite a haircut. They lose almost twice than they thought. The only thing I'll say, and I really have no Peloton, okay? I have no Peloton. 
They're saying it's seasonal. Maybe that's the low. This is the all-time low for their stock, and you're catching a little bit of a pop on the open, so maybe I'm not the only one thinking that, okay? And listen, folks, there's a very real chance this stock goes to zero, okay? But if you're in a gambling mood and you want a high-risk trade, this is a seasonal business. The summer is not the time that they sell fitness equipment because nobody's locking themselves inside during the summer, okay? You're hanging out with your kids. You're doing some traveling. This is going to be the tough quarter for them. And you just hit an all-time low on that chart of $5. And with that, we've now bounced. And you talk about percentages on small numbers. We just bounced 10% from where we were near the open right now at 560. We jump back to Foot Locker shares real quick. They don't get a bounce, man. They're off 34%. Nike down 3.6%. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks today ahead of NVIDIA. Amazon shares are flat. Microsoft up by three quarters percent. Apple, there you go, man. Apple. That's going to carry the market when you got Apple up 1.1%. We jump over to Tesla shares. They trade a little bit lower, off by about 7 tenths percent. All right, let's talk about some of the other headlines we got out there. Let's talk about home purchase applications. Folks, the mortgage rate 7.3%, the highest since 2000. Mortgage applications, lowest since 1995. Yeah, rates hitting home buyers in a big way. So the Mortgage Bankers Association Index of Home Purchase Applications, quite a name, fell 5% to 142. You check it out on the chart. Pretty interesting when you look where we were, where we were coming into that bubble in 2008, where we went, and we are back to where we were in 1995. Look at this. The 30-year fixed rate, 7.5%. 7 7.5% on a mortgage. Now listen. I am well aware, as many are, that going back to the 80s, we had a time when people were taking out 18% mortgages. But guess what? You had inflation raging, okay? So it's a very different time when you're paying 18% for a home, which is an asset, during a time of multi-generational inflation, right? During the 80s. That's why you had that. Inflation has now calmed a bit, okay? We're not at 15 and 20% inflation. We're at... 4% inflation. So you're still paying a 7.5% mortgage when you're only getting 4% growth right now. We'll see where we go from there, but these numbers are going to keep coming. And what's so interesting, okay, here's where I'll caution you, is that, and we're going to jump to some of the home builders as we jump around here. Lennar is basically flat today. We take a look at these, though, as we've seen rates come back. July 13th, okay, Lennar hit 133. We're at 116. Yeah, and that's where you were July 13th, okay? Things matter in terms of we've seen the 10-year trade from a price of 113 down to 109. Rates have spiked up again, and that actually might be building, hitting the home builders this time. They're the only supply in town, so they'll be okay. Uh, yeah. All right, folks, we're coming back. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk some dollar. We'll talk some foreign currencies. We'll talk some commodities, crude oil, and gold. We'll be right back. Don't go away. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, 
bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 13 right now. NASDAQ 100 positive by 50. You jump over to that dollar index right now. Dollar index up 19 pennies, 103.75. We got yields with some action. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday. He puts out new issues Monday morning. You can also, okay, come on over to the services tab. And Teddy did an outstanding webinar recently on candlestick patterns. You can purchase that for $97, folks. It's not a recurring subscription. Great 60-minute webinar with Teddy talking about some candlesticks. Uh, and, yeah, we got yields rocking, man. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so let's kick it off with yields. What do you think of the action, man? We had the 10-year spiking almost recent highs. Uh, what do you think of the action as we got higher yields coming into Jackson Hole this Friday, Teddy? Well, you know, Monday we set a nice low in the 10-year uh, in the bonds, and uh, yesterday we had a little bit of a, or excuse me, <clears throat> a nice little pullback, and I think today the follow-through, we have a nice profit-taking rally going on, so yields are pulling back right now. I don't, I wouldn't read into it too much, you know, I mean, especially when you look at the, the, the slope of the trend going down right now for the 10-year sure. uh, and the 30-year. Do you think this, I mean, there's a lot, of course, you know, talking heads, myself included, everyone, a lot of discussion, of course, about where we go for rates, right? Is there a new normalization kind of of the inflation that we might be accepting going forward? Maybe that contributes to a higher interest rate going forward. Big picture, Teddy, where do you kind of see these rates? And I'm asking you the million dollar, billion dollar question, man. But we're at some lofty levels right now. And it seems like we're getting a little bit of a repricing here for higher rates. I know you've been talking about higher but where do you see potentially, because we're at, what, 4.3, 4.35, we're pushing yesterday on the 10-year. Um, is there a level that you're looking for those maybe as we continue? Or where do you see things as we go three, six months down the line? I know that's really far, man, and we got a lot to go on. But big picture, do you try and envision that? Are we at some levels? I know you're always putting out levels to your subscribers in the Tiger Forex report. Um, where, where do you see kind of the risk-reward of these types of trades as we're pushing some pretty lofty levels on a yield at recent highs? That's a great question. I actually went on a golf trip this weekend with somebody from Merrill Lynch and also uh, someone from a big real estate firm. And they asked, asked the same question, where do I see yields really going to? And I told them, honestly, I think that by Easter, between, if you look at where they're at right now over the next, I would say, seven to eight months, that probably yields are going to be every bit of one, about one to one and a quarter percent higher. Now, the reason I say that is that we've been in fantasy land at 0% for a very, very long time. If we're going to have any type of economic stability ever again, we need to have – right now, this should be like the floor for rates. It's just a reality. I mean, when I was a child, 
you know, I mean, mortgages were going off at, you know, I mean, there was a high point at 18, 19 percent was ridiculous. But for eight to 12 percent was normal for people with good credit. And that's also for market stability. The fact that we're at the levels right now is causing all this instability. And it's one of the reasons why we have the problems we have right now. It's also the reason why we have such a high debt load. You know what's nice? The higher our rates go and with the downgrades that are going for our treasury bonds, you know what that means? Our credit ability to um, run up a tab is decreasing. Overall, that is a good thing because we cannot keep doing what we're doing. It's a fun, it's a fundamental economic reality that, you know, we're, we're starting to pay the price and we're going to have to for a long time. So, I mean, we can go back and push them down back to zero, but all we're going to do is make problems, you know, much, much worse in the long run. Yeah, I think we all learned if you had an economics class, folks, in high school or in college, that you either consume or you save, right, Teddy? And usually if you save, you're supposed to be able to consume more in the future by saving. And uh, always interesting when we started getting negative interest rates. How I wonder what teachers were doing during that time when they were teaching the consume and save um, lesson. And meanwhile, somebody said, well, what happens when you get negative interest rates? They said, well, you save and then you get less in the future. I said, what happens there? I know. Right. Um, so yields, what, what do you think about the dollar, Teddy? If let's just say that we do get that scenario play out, which is totally plausible, man, I agree with a lot of what you say. We're at a different time, 0% not coming back. Where do you see that hitting the dollar as right now, dollar index 103.60 about right now, um, chopping around a bit compared to the move we've had in yields. What do you see that doing to potentially the dollar if that's where things play out? Uh, well, it's definitely strong. It's bullish for the dollar. Now, I wouldn't say that it's going to make the dollar trend in an extreme way over the next eight months. I think you're going to have a lot of divergence in markets. You know, a, a day like today is actually a perfect way, way to look at it. We have yields that have come back over the past 24 hours trending nicely. And we have, look at the euro, U.S. dollars making new lows today. The pound dollars making new lows. Um, the U.S. dollar Swiss isn't going anywhere. The U.S. dollar yen you know, it's getting kind of toppy, but that's the one that's actually technically trading proper today because yields are going down. Oil is also down. The U.S. dollar yen should actually come back, you know, and that's what it's doing. The other currencies where there's all kinds of dollar strength, I think it's a lot more because of the, the fundamentals that are going on over there. The EU's economy is collapsing, you know. I mean, like, they are not looking good for the next two quarters. There is no uptick up. There's no forecast that even remotely makes things look good. Their economy is strained. And the conflict that's going on in the Ukraine is only going to keep to keep on deteriorating that situation. And especially once, you know, if we get Poland starts to get involved with this, you know, NATO is going to escalate things. This is not going to help the European economy whatsoever, you know. And then you have the UK also that's in a really similar shape too. Their economy is imploding also, you know. So I think that it doesn't yields don't impact those two currencies right now and they're the biggest weight in the dollar index so the dollar index may be artificially held up over the course of the next next eight months because of those those currencies themselves because i don't think their central banks can really do things just to help them out so much because it's not going to change the uh the fact that i mean you have two quarters now of the industrial complex of germany just collapsing I mean, and that's not look. There, there's no forecast that things are going to get better over the next two to three quarters. And if that does trend continues, the euro U.S. dollar is going to be under pressure. I mean, I can't see how the euro U.S. dollar wouldn't be at parity by Christmas time, the Easter time, if that really pans out. I know, and it sounds wild at parity when we were just at 112, but boy, we were just at parity less than a year ago, man. Things are crazy. Right. Uh, how about crude? Everyone always wants to talk crude, man. I filled my car up. It was 70 bucks for the first time in a while, and uh, things are easing a bit. Even as I talk to you, man, we're getting quite a little drop off right now as we got some action. We got a 77 handle in the price of crude. What do you think of the action in crude as we're getting a little bit of a re reprieve from the recent highs? Well, in the Tiger Forex report, those people know that two weeks ago we had a sell signal and now we're actually down below our downside breakout uh, level and we're close to our target. We're two dollars away. I think oil can get down to around 76 something uh, in the futures, you know, in the, in the front month futures sometime over the next couple of days, possibly or definitely next week, you know, as we head into the Labor Day holiday. And then I think it's going to kind of go sideways for a little bit. 
you know i don't see i think that oil probably is setting a higher floor you know I and mean, that's what we're yeah. gonna we're gonna seek that out over the next couple of weeks and then probably get a bounce and then start going sideways you know i don't see I, overall i'm still bullish the market i don't see any reason fundamental reason why things would go lower you know especially after i was just in michigan and i found out how they're they're forcing people with uh wells to cap their wells there most people don't know that they drill oil in michigan but they do <laughs> and they're they're uh, the government the, the the actually the state is now mandating that people cap their wells so that's a big deal you know if that continues there i know no one thinks about michigan but that's also more production that's going to be in our country that's going to decrease teddy i appreciate it as always man you have yourself a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week brother take care take care folks stay tuned we'll be right back Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV program. And join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 15. Yeah, that crew contract pulling back about $1.75. We're down by 2.1% right now at 77.92. Teddy has had some great calls, man, in the market, especially in the crew market. If you're following the weekly interviews, man, last week, uh, he had talked about, you know, he has been a bull in this crude market longer term, but he was talking about pressures to the downside from that acceleration we had. The low of $67 in June, up to 85, folks. Uh, quite an acceleration. So we're getting a little bit of a reprieve. We're at the 382 right now uh so we'll see where we go from there and what do we got going on today folks <clears throat> we got our man basil chapman he is coming up next with the tiger technicians hour and then 
Basil's taking a slight reprieve, a slight break, and then he's coming back at 4 o'clock for a 90-minute subscriber webinar, folks. The webinar is free for opening call subscribers. If you're already an opening call subscriber, you don't have to do anything. You can attend that webinar in our Discord server at 4 o'clock today, right after my dad's program. If you've never signed up for Basil's webinar um, newsletter, folks, the opening call, great time to do it. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You gain access to his newsletter, which is outstanding in its own right. You gain access to the webinar tonight, 90 minutes. It will be archived, okay? And you also gain access, though, to a plethora of archive webinars. And I just pulled them up. So this is the subscriber section of the opening call. One part of it, okay, that has to do with archive webinars. And just a quick glimpse, folks, <clears throat> you can go as far back as you want to hang with Basil. Now, he's got a webinar in there he did in May. He's got a webinar in there he did last year. He's got about 10 or 12 webinars, folks. All right, so over the course of the month, you can dabble in these. You can take advantage of them. The one he's doing tonight will be archived as well. And not only that, folks, Basil puts out hour-long videos basically every weekend. And again, just a glimpse, this is the one he put out Friday night, an hour and one minute. He has basically webinars every single week that he puts out for subscribers in terms of hour-long videos going over the market. You get all of that when you sign up for Basil Chapman's opening call, folks. Check it out. Sign up. Get in there today, 4 till 5.30. Uh, I'm going to be in there talking about the power of the 914 moving average, other indicators, on balance volume, how to choose where the market may be turning. And boy, Basil had some great pegs of the market selling that Dow at the highs. Get in there and find out how he did it, folks, as this market charges higher yet again. Thanks for starting your day off with me, folks. Stay tuned. Our man Basil is up next. Have a great one. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks.